Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we are preparing for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. We are in the process of solving math problems, as I said, and today is our lesson number. Today is our lesson number 14. Day number 14, and we are on page number 11. We are doing the sample problem that you see on the top of the page 11. No, not on top of page 11. Sample problems that you see there towards the bottom half of page 11. We have done up to 5. Today we'll do 6 through 10. This problem that you see is from yesterday. Let's get going. Number 6. Sample problem number 6. Before I forget it, before I completely forget it, if you want to get some more practice in multiplying numbers involving decimal, multiplication of decimals is a topic. If you need, if you, if you, if you wish to have more practice, you can watch these videos. Just watch, just type in T's, T's math, day 7, 8 and 9. Day 7, 8 and 9. And day number 2 that you see there will teach you the squares. You must know your squares as I said yesterday. So 2, 7, 8, and 9. In addition to that, if you want some more, Basic Math Day 30. There are two series, Basic Math and T's. Basic Math Day 30, I would like you to watch. You will get some more practice, practice problem there. And then 7, 8, and 9. Number 6. 8.23, 8.23 times 4. Times 4. And as we have always said, before we begin our work, we must have some ideas to where we are headed. We must know approximate answer. We have to understand the problem at the gut level. 8.23 times 4 is no different than 4 times 8 and a quarter. We can approximate that. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna pretend that this is approximately. We're going to pretend that 8.23 is approximately 8.25. 8.25 is 8 and, a, 8 and a quarter. So 4 times 8 and a quarter. Can you tell me how much it is? It's very simple. We know 4 times 8. 4 times 8 is 32. 4 times 8 is 32 plus, plus 4 quarters. 4 times a quarter. How much, how much do you have if you have 4 quarters? How much do you have if you have 4 quarters? Well, 4 quarters make a whole. Thinking of the money. If you have 4 quarters, that's a dollar. 4 quarters make a 1. So it's going to be 1. So the answer is going to be approximately 33. The question that we have to ask ourselves is now, is that 33 that we came up with, is that an overestimation? Or is that an underestimation? Is the correct answer going to be slightly more than 33? Or is the correct answer going to be slightly less than 33? Let's find out, shall we? It is 8.23. We are pretending 8.23 is 8.25. Obviously, we are overestimating. This is an overestimate. 33 is an overestimate. Since 33 is an overestimate, that tells us the correct answer, whatever it is, has to be slightly under 33. We, this is how we show it. Put 33, put a negative sign on top of it and circle it to emphasize that it is going to be slightly less than 33. Now, if you happen to find just one answer choice among the four answer choices that they give you, if there happens to be only one answer choice that is slightly under 33, then you're done. You don't have to waste your time doing it out. It's not necessary. Nobody's asking us to do it. Nobody's asking us how much is 8.23 times 4. Nobody is asking us that. What we are being asked here is, can you recognize among the four answer choices which would qualify as the answer to 8.43, 8.23 times 4. And if the answer to that is yes, then they don't have to do it. Let's do it out. Only for learning purposes. 823, 823 times 4, times 4. See, let's see what we can find. 4, 3 is a 12, 2, carry 1. 4, 2 is a 8, plus 1 is 9. 8, 4 is a 32. There you go. There you go. Turns out, turns out that the answer is 32.92, which, which we said is going to be slightly under 33. Is 32.92. See here is the decimal 1, 2. We're going to move it as decimal places here. We're going to move it two places 1, 2. The correct answer is 32.92, which is slightly under 33, just as we said. Let's do the next one. Number 7. Again, in number 7, you will see the, the advantage in being able to estimate because sometimes if you, if you try to do the problem exactly the way they give you, it's very annoying, it's very time-consuming. And, and if it's something as annoying and time-consuming and if you're under pressure because of time, that's when you're likely 
we are more likely to end up making some mistake, which is exactly what they are hoping that, will, that you will do. Estimate, learn to estimate, take charge of the exam, take, take charge of the situation, do not be a bloody puppet. Do you understand? For example, here they tell you 0 0.58 times 64.2. Now, you could actually sit there, you could actually sit there and take 642 and multiply it by 58. You could do that, but as you can clearly see, that's going to take time. You're going to have to involve the table of 8, table of 5. It's not a straightforward process. Let's, let's approximate it. It is 0 0.058. Would you agree that that is approximately 0 0.06? Would you say that? And would you, would you also agree that this is approximately 64? So essentially, we have to figure out 0 0.06 times 64 and we are done. Let's find out here. 64 times 6 and we are done. 6 4 is 24, that's 4, carry 2, 6 6 is 36 plus 2, that is 38. And let's figure out where the decimal place is going to go. Here we have two places. Remember, if you're going to approximate, this is what you're dealing with. You're not dealing with that. So here we have 1 and 2. And here we have, actually here we have just 64. We're dealing with 64. You have to understand what you're dealing with. We're no longer dealing with the exact quantity. We're dealing with this quantity and that quantity. That quantity has no decimal place. And this one has 1 and 2. So we move our decimal places two spots. We pick up our decimal, which is right here, move it two spots, one and two. The answer is going to be about 3.84. The answer is going to be about 3.84. The question is, is there an overestimation or an underestimation? Let's talk about it. That's why it takes so long to do the problem, because we are learning, we are understanding what's going on. We're not here to do simply do the problems. We are here to learn. This is going to be a little tricky. This is 0 0.058. We are pretending that the 0.058 is 0 0.06. That's an overestimation. This is an overestimation. This is 64.2. We are pretending it is 64. By pretending that 64.2 is 64, we are underestimating it. Here we are underestimating it by converting 64.2 to 64. Here we are overestimating. They sort of negate each other, these two processes negate each other and therefore here it is difficult to tell but the correct answer is going to be slightly more than that or slightly less than that. We do not know which direction it's going to go. It's very difficult to tell whether this is an overestimation or underestimation but we do know that whatever the damn thing is it's got to be very close to 3.84. It's got to be very close to 3.84 and if it turns out that there is only one answer choice which is 3.84 and the other answer choice says 38.4 and the one says 0.384 then of course you're done. The answer is going to be something that close to that comes to come close to 3.84. Let's do it out. We're taking too long. 8 to the 16, 6 carry 1, 4 is a 32, plus 1 is 33, 3 carry 3. You have to know your tables. You must know your tables. As I always remind you, if you have not learned your table yet, tables yet, go to this series here, Basic Math. Watch the first 12 video in Basic Math, day 1 through 12, and learn your tables. 6 is a 48, 48 plus 3, 48 plus 2 is 50, so it's going to be 51. We're done with that. Now we multiply it by 5, which is going to go a little bit faster. 2 5 is a 10, 0, carry 1. Cross out that one and put a new one there, because it's a new round. Don't be lazy. Don't just leave it like that. Cross it out and put a new one, because it's a new round. That's how we keep track of things. 5 4 is a 20, 5 4 is a 20, plus 1 is 21. 21, 1, carry 2, carry 2. Cross that 3 out, carry 2. 6 5 is a 30, 30 plus 2 is 32. And we're going to get 6, 3, 2, 7, 3. Oh, what do you know? It turns out that the exact answer here, here, since we're doing it this way, we have to move it, we're dealing with this quantity here, 1, 2, 3, and here, 4. So we pick up here, 1, 2, 3, 4. Correct, correct answer is 3.72. We said it's going to be 3.8. The correct answer turns out to be 3.7. So like I said, if you find only one answer choice that comes close to 3.8, which is 3.72, you're done. That's the answer. But this wasn't necessary. If there happens to be only one answer choice that comes close to it. Let's move on to number 8. We're taking too long. Number 8 should go very fast because there is not much in there. 974.23 times 0 0.001. Well, that is same as multiplying. That is same as multiplying 907. 
79,423 times 1 is the same thing, which is simply going to be 79423. That's it, that's your answer. And now we take care of the decimal. That's all it is. But there's not much here because we're multiplying it by 1. It's not going to change anything. It's just multiplying it by 1. They just want to know, they just want to know if you know where to put your decimal point. Let's find out, shall we? Take your time. There's no rush here. Count it. Count it. Count the decimal places. 1, 2, here there are 2. And here we have 1, 2, 3. We need to move our decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots. Here is our decimal right now as it stands. Because we did, we did 79,423 times 1, which is what we have here. Decimal is right here. We need to move it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spots. Right here. It comes here. The answer is 0 0.79423. 0 0.79423. Let's do number 9, the penultimate one. The second to the last one. We are told that we lost 3.2 pound each month for 6 months. For 6 months we lost, we have been losing 3.2 pound for 6 months. In case you are wondering if there is any significance of 3.2 pounds, when we get to the units of measurements, eventually towards the very end of it, you are going to have to learn how to convert from the metric system to the English system that is used in the US and vice versa from the English system from pounds to kilogram and kilogram to pounds. 3.2 pound, 3.2 pounds is exactly 2 kilos. So this person has lost 2 kilograms of weight every month for 6 months. That person has lost 12 kilograms. Let's find out what 3.2 times 6 is, which is simply 32 times 6. 2, 6 are 12, carry 2, carry 1, 3, 6 are 18, plus 1 is 19, and now we put in our decimal point, as always, at the end. There is only one decimal place, that's it, so we pick our decimal, which is right here, move it one spot, and that's it, 19.2 is the answer. The answer is, this person has lost 19.2 pounds. Let's hope and pray to God that she finds it. Number 10, we have two and a half batches, whatever, whatever we are doing here, I don't remember now. Richard wants to make two and a half batches of sugar cookies. Oh, Richard wants to make, how nice of them, eh? We're not being sexist at all, are we? Uh, he wants to cook 2.5 batches. And each batch, we are told, each batch calls for 1.75 cup of sugar. It's very touching. It's very heartwarming to know that we do not gender stereotype. We have Richard making the cookies. So 2.5 batches, each one requires 1.75, essentially we have to multiply 1.75 by 2.5, let's multiply 175 by 25. Now there are two ways we can go about it, I'm going to first show you the grown-up method and then if you insist, if you're hell-bent on it, we'll do the baby way, do you understand? The grown-up method is simply multiply by 25. Multiplying a number by 25 is not that difficult. Tables of 25 is very simple. Think in terms of money, think in terms of quarters. 25 times 25 is 125, that's 5, carry 12. And if you're not used to seeing somebody carrying two digits, this is going to freak you out. I'm going to do it again the baby way in a second. 25 times 7, listen very carefully, 25 times 7, 25 times 8 is exactly 200. If I have 8 quarters, 8 quarters make $2, which is 25 times 8. If 8 quarters make $2, then it stands to reason that 7 quarters should make $1.75 or 175 175 plus 10 is 185, another 2 would be 187. 187, 7, carry 18. Is this freaking you out? 
Then we have 25 times 1, which is 25. 25 plus 18 is what we have to figure out. 25 plus 18. 25 plus 10 is 35. 35 plus 110 would be 45. In other words, 25 plus 20, 25 plus 20 would have been 45. We don't have 20, we have 18. So it's going to be 43. That's it, we're done. Now we do our decimal. Now we do our decimal. Here we have two spots, one and two, and here we have one. Pick up the decimal, move it three spots. One, two, three, it's going to end up here. The answer is 4.375 of sugar. He's going to need 4.375 cup of sugar. Let's do it out one digit at a time. If this is bothering you, if you find this annoying, let's do it out again. We're going to multiply 175 times 25. 175, 175 times 25. Okay, one digit at a time, the usual way, as I said, the baby way. 5, 5 is a 25, 5 carry 2, 7, 5 is a 30, plus 2 is 37, 7 carry 3, 5, 1 is a 5, plus 3 is 8. We're done with the unit digit, we want to 10 digit, all the unit digits, 2, 5 is a 10, that's 0, carry 1, cross out the 2, carry 1. 2 7s are 14, plus 1 is 15, that's a 5, carry 1, cross out the 3, put a 1. 2 1s are 1, 2 1s are 2, plus 1 is 3. Let's hope and pray to God that we get the same answer. We have a 5 here, we have a 7 here, 8 plus 5 is 13, 3, carry 1, 3 plus 1 is 4. And now we do our decimal just like before, just like before. And of course, it's going to give us the same answer because it is the same exact thing as you can see. 4375, 4375. We move the decimal places three spots here. It's sitting right here. 1, 2, 3. End up with 4.375, just like before. Nothing to it. This goes faster because we did one digit. Uh, we did 25 together instead of doing one digit at a time. That was the end of the topic of multiplication of decimals. As I said, if you need more practice, the videos are there. Do these problems from here, from T's. The math of T's and the HESI is very similar. Day 8, 9, and 10 where you will see the multiplication of decimal. Day number 2 is where you will learn the squares that you need to learn. And if you need some more help after that, there are plenty more problems there you will find in the basic math series. Day number 30 is what you want to watch where we did multiplication of decimals. We are done with the decimals. I think we are going to next move on to the division of decimals. Yes, division of decimals which scares the hell out of most people. But don't worry, we have a trick. We have a trick, we have an ace, our, uh, ace up our sleeve. I think that's the expression. I'll show you the ace tomorrow. Okay, bye now.